Yes. <laughs> See if I know how to do this. Greetings, my name's Kelby Stein. I'm a senior QA at the company Sovos, and I'm just incredibly excited to be here. Um, it was often a long-standing joke in many places that I worked at in the past that when Robocon first came out, they said, Kelby, you should be there live. Well, here I am living the dream. As a, as a just a point of order, um, I will have all the examples of everything that I demo here available in a GitHub repo that I'll push later on after Robocon. So if there's something you want to look at in more detail, see me in the speaker's corner today or wait for that to happen. Story time. So based off of a true fact, or a true story, I should say. Once upon a time, there was a team of software engineers who needed to test slices of their product. One part of the team chose Python to test their slice. The other part of the team decided to use Robot Framework. Robot Framework, though, got all the attention borrowing code from Python, importing libraries, special keywords for evaluating Python, inline syntax. The other team was kind of feeling left out. Maybe Python can borrow something from Robot Framework. So they got together and they realized, not only do we have Python in our Robot Framework, but Robot Framework is now in our Python. So a little bit of scope here, just to give you a sense of what this presentation's aimed at. Uh, metrics, who has been using Robot Framework for a year or less? One, two, three, four. Welcome group on your journey. Okay, a little bit bigger group. Metrics, five years or less. Okay, larger. Excellent. You're the people that I'm talking to the most. But I don't want to leave out... Ah. <laughs> but I don't want to leave out the, the advanced crew because I want them to get inspired more than anything else. Because I'm sure they can get into the weeds and make robot work in a Python script in ways that shouldn't be allowed. So... To prevent ourselves from going into the actual rabbit hole, and this is, this is my backyard, by the way, I, I get a Nest Alert cam whenever a rabbit comes out of there. In fact, I just got one like 15 minutes ago. Use cases. There's really only two big use cases. The first one is that when you have a big, or just any robot framework uh, project, It'll always have some ancillary scripts, usually in Python, to do things that are outside of the robot framework. And it's a shame that we cannot use, or maybe we, that's the whole point of this talk. It's a shame that a lot of people forget that they have an entire set of libraries of abstracted code that have been tested and proven in the field. I mean, behind every single robot framework keyword, there's a Python method. Uh, in fact, I did the totals. In just the standard libraries alone, there are 325 total keywords. And that's not even counting some of the kind of bizarre things you can do with, like, the API. The other piece of the puzzle is sometimes you have a project that has a little bit of robot framework in it, and also, it's paired up with a tool that's only Python. But boy, you'd really like to use some of those robot framework keywords in that Python. Uh, in my case, and that's based off of the story that I told this told at the first, is uh, Locust.io. That's a load testing tool exclusively in Python. 
and I used bits and pieces of existing robot framework code in that Python project. So the first thing that you have to kind of look at is dependencies. I am not advocating that if you want to use the robot framework code in Python, that you have a Python project and you're importing robot framework code. That seems a little odd. Um, but this is for, you know, if you already have a project, you probably already have all the dependencies, you might as well use them. Plus, third-party libraries will often require robot framework to be installed anyway. So it, if, you're tr if you're thinking of taking this idea and just using it for a Python-only project, eh, probably not the best idea. So let's talk about importing a little bit. Now, if you've had experience uh, using custom libraries or building your own custom libraries, I'm assuming just about everyone here has tried metric. How many people have made their own custom Python libraries for their project? OK, yeah, it's almost everybody. So a lot of this I'm just borrowing from that portion of the user guide. So up front is just the direct import right from built-in. Um, it's OK-ish. Uh, you can do it, but as you can see with the syntax, it can get really, really um, uh, long and take up a lot of space, kind of defeating the purpose of uh, making things more concise, readable. Better to maybe import as. Uh, even better using the from import, a little bit cleaner, a little bit more Python-like. And finally, within classes, and notice that the structure is getting closer and closer to the way you would actually use a proper custom library because what's cool about this is if you've put the work in to have this ancillary extra little script that does things, you can go back and make that into a robot framework library and use it later. Uh, inheritance. Uh, just don't do this. Um, as you can see, uh, if you inherit the entire built-in library inside your class, you'll probably, you just don't. Um, the other reason is quite simply, if you do fold it back into Robot Framework, that will usually confuse IDEs or any sort of helpful thing and say, which built-in do you want to use? The one from your custom library or the one that's actually built-in? So I, I like putting this on a pedestal because this is like an example of what I mean by abstraction. Get length and any of the derivatives, so like verifying length and so forth. Um, as you can see, someone did a lot of work to get that to look that beautiful. Um, yeah, you're not supposed to maybe do that much nested exception and chaining, but it's beautiful to look at anyway. And as noted from earlier talks, that um, the advantage of using this, key, this keyword set is that um, it's type agnostic, which is, can be seen as a problem because you can throw a list in here, you can throw a dictionary in here, you can throw practically anything in here and it'll handle it. Uh, so it's more of a convenience. That's why it's maybe better as a script, using a script as opposed to an actual like application. Uh, my one of my favorite third-party libraries, while well, it has some of issues here and there, but what's nice is that when you're using these libraries, you're getting a lot of things out of the box that you might have to have actually like constructed on your own, like logging or error handling, uh, things that, you know, if you were to do this strictly in Python, I mean, look at all the work that's been done here. Now, there's a couple of special cases where if you're going to try to use these tools in a Python script, um, there's some rules. For example, the Selenium library, 
there's good documentation on how to use Selenium in Python, uh, and it's mostly for making your own custom libraries. I would stick to those rules. Um, also, browser, you could do it. I've tried. Uh, but there's a couple of, huh? Try harder. Try harder. Um, but there's a reason why I recommend against that. The only one that I do like using as a, a separate script is the request library. Um, mostly because if you do use it either as a separate script or as part of a uh, custom library, with a little bit of error handling, you can make that work. Um, this is sort of like, this is sort of a generic pattern that I use. If you want to use an instance of of either what you ever you pull into uh, Robot Framework, or if you're running your script on the side. But ultimately, you can just use the at keyword or at library decorators and just make a library from your side script. So you kind of have a dual purpose script that you could call, like especially if you're into using like tasks as opposed to tests. And look, you know, I'm just using the get on session right there. And when you pull it in, it's just as simple as pulling in any other library. And you just use it in a, a keyword like you would do anything else. So I could have it run, like maybe use arg parser or something like that as an individual script, or I can run it in this context. Two for one. Um, I, the last, the, the second test, which is kind of neat, um, and it's better explained in the example, which I'll send to you guys later. Um, but you notice I can pull in the alias that I set up in the script from the library that I've made on the side. But because I'm tapping into the instance that uh, Robot Framework is using, I can actually check and see if that exists. Now there's a couple of electric fence keyword sets that I would just recommend staying away from. One is run keyword and all of its derivatives. And the other one is the import variable import resource. Because without robot fr framework actually running, uh, you'll run across the robot not running error. And unless you f are an advanced person, you want to get down that rabbit hole and like mock robot framework just to get your you know, script running, that's, that's your time. <laughs> All right, demo time. So the advantage of being able to leverage built-in methods that are behind all the keywords in a script is you can do something really fast and working. So in this case, I took dialogues, the built-in library and the operating system, and created this running script in about an hour and a half, 30 minutes of cleanup time. It was fairly straightforward, so I got a little video here. So I'm running the script. Give it a moment. Pops up a screen. You can, this is all dialogues. I wish I had some mood music here or something. I don't know. Anyone know how to beatbox? I, do I dare ask that? I don't know. <laughs> So just filling in some details. And this is the kind of script that you might want to hand to someone who's a little bit more junior. Say, hey, here's a script that can be used to like build things, do things, and it's just point and click. The longest one minute, 47 seconds of my life. <laughs> so you notice it's building, and it, it just put together a little template file right off the bat. Uh, filled on all the generic information you'd normally have to do when you set up a file. But I did this all in like an hour and a half of coding. 
Then I can I can run it again. And of course I made the method destroy all destroy everything. Destroy folders. And that just hit OK, deletes everything. Now if you're interested in that, that need, needs a little bit more development for production, but it's working. Yep, of course it's going to okay. Done, done. Excellent. So there's a couple things that I'm using in this script. Number one, I'm using an enum to define all the little section, the, the pre-made sections, which is something, if we had like actual enum, direct enum support in robot, that'd be kind of nice, but this is a good second. Um, for selecting all the different options, I'm using actually a match case structure. I could have used different structures, but I said, eh, I'm in Python 3.10, might as well go there. To handle, now, so one of the disadvantages that I will say for using dialogue specifically is that if you have somebody click on the cancel button, that will cause an error and you need to be able to actually handle that in the script. So you get to add maybe a little bit more uh, code in and that seems a little bit antithetical, but since you're using dialogues, you don't have to actually worry about making all of those dialogue boxes. It's already done for you. So you're saving time with messing with TK, tkinter, but you're spending a little bit more time handling all the error messages. Uh, I even sort of created a mock run keywords. Um, this method here, I can actually pull in all the methods and run them just like you would have run keywords and like doing next, next, next. And of course, this is handling the assertion error caused by um, hitting the cancel in dialogues. And that's actually it. Any questions? <laughs>